Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to talk about turning the corner on the AIDS pandemic, refining the science-driven research enterprise. So what are we really talking about today? What we are talking about is the beginning of the process of the refinement of the NIH clinical trials networks that are due to recompete in 2020. If you think about what that means, with a seven-year grant cycle, we are talking about the beginning of the process of setting a research agenda that will be with us and guide us until we get to 2027. This is our opportunity to set a very forward-looking, aggressive agenda where we can really begin to not only turn the corner on the AIDS pandemic, but bring it to its knees. So where are we today? We stand on the shoulders you try advancing the slide for me? Thank you. We, we stand on the shoulders of past success. If you think about where we are uh, with HIV therapeutics, we've moved to one pill once a day. We've had the development of PrEP over the past 10 years. We've also achieved um, examples of sex-specific protection from infection with the completion by um, the NIH of two of the three adult medical male circumcision trials and the completion of the Aspire Ring trial, which demonstrated 27% protection in women. We've also performed the research that will bring us to a point where we can virtually eliminate, if fully implemented, uh, option B plus to, to, um, to eliminate perinatal and breastfeeding transmission. We're building on the results of the RV144 trial, and we continue to move forward with long-acting technologies for both treatment and prevention. Next slide, please. At the same time, NIH has provided us a roadmap, a, a set of high priority areas for us to focus on. And these are not surprising, and they're very nicely aligned with the NIAID's priorities, and uh, therefore, it's always, it, it's always good to be, be aligned with the mothership. We'll just leave it at that. Um, we have, first and foremost, uh, the responsibility for developing the technologies to reduce HIV incidence through the development of better PrEP um, and safe and effective uh, vaccines. Additionally, we are seeking to develop the next generation of HIV therapies that are really focused on innovation, not just pills, but other strategies. And this, is all, this will also help us lead into better ways um, and improvements as we move forward to discover and develop a cure, um, including sustained virologic remission in the absence of therapy for uh, HIV-infected individuals. We want to continue to improve um, and innovate on the prevention and treatment of HIV-associated co-infections and comorbidities, and foster cross-cutting research in a number of critical areas. Next slide. So today, as I said, we're beginning the process of, of working with the community, working with the research community, um, working with all our stakeholders and partners to help come together to define the high-priority research questions, which will allow us to create, validate, um, and ultimately work with others to implement impactful interventions so we can help bring the epidemic to a close. We're seeking to foster stakeholder input into the scientific directions of the network enterprise, um, including uh, the researchers, the community, and advocate perspectives. But at the same time, there are some very specific other changes that we as NIH are seeking to, uh, to implement. We are going to move to an NIAID clinical site model, which creates a pool of interoperable sites that through a pay-as-you-go mechanism will, could be used to address infectious disease outbreaks. Many of you are aware of what we have uh, experienced now with Zika and what we have been through in the past with our um, uh, approaches to the Ebola virus outbreak in West Africa. We feel that this will position NIAID in a, in a better way to be more responsive for um, future outbreaks. Next slide, please. So uh, in terms of, you know, sort of the givens, where are we, um, what are we taking away from our past experiences within the, the networks? We are reasonably satisfied with the current structure that we use of a, a tripartite leadership and operations center, laboratory center, and statistical and data management center. Additionally, we're satisfied with the independent sites that we, are, we can provide direct funding at a basal level uh, to clinical trials units and sites that then allow them to um, have su some support and then uh, take their um, protocol implementation funds um, through the networks. 
Next slide, please. So what are the areas of research emphasis that we're really going to push on, uh, where we're going to seek to foster strategic innovation? Well, the three major areas moving forward are not surprising to any of you. Non-vaccine prevention, vaccines, and therapeutics. So um, as we move forward, what we're seeking are a set of questions that will be um, either specific or applicable to either specific groups of people or uh, more generally to um, larger populations. What we're seeking to do through this model is to create an integrated um, strategy in therapeutics and prevention so that we cover the waterfront from, from adults to pediatrics, adolescents and pregnant women in, in each of the three emphasis areas above. No, if you think about this for a moment, nowhere is that more important than the area of HIV prevention. Globally, the, the group that is the biggest challenge, not just for us, but for researchers and implementers around the globe, are the, is the, 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 around sexual debut and the, and the adolescents uh, as, they, as they mature and enter into their 20s. Uh, in the United States, the young black MSM have the highest incidence. Uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, it's young women. Both of these are unique populations that have their own independent ways of enjoying their lives and going about in the typically adolescent or young adult, um, I am invincible type of approach. And so this is a challenge for us to, to reach these people, um, engage them in research, um, and ultimately uh, provide them the products that they, uh, that they don't know they desire yet in order to protect them from HIV infection or treat their HIV infection. We're also going to seek ways to implement better data, data interoperability and standardization to foster data sharing, exchange, and transparency. Additionally, we are seeking to work with the laboratories um, to prioritize sharing of this laboratory expertise across the networks. In all reality, we are dealing with an infectious disease of the immune system. So we need to be able to share both virology and immunology expertise across the, the, um, the clinical trials networks so that the, the assays are, are standardized and QC'd in such a way uh, that the data is reliable and reproducible across all the platforms. Next slide, please. So moving to the areas of scientific emphasis. Next slide, please. First and foremost up um, is, the or is uh, non-vaccine prevention. And here we are seeking to develop new and easily usable methods to prevent HIV acquisition. Um, we are seeking safe, desirable, durable syst systemic infection, systemic protection from infection uh, for men and women. Ultimately, also, we'd like to continue to push on multipurpose prevention technologies where we could incorporate contraception and STI prevention for men and women, um, for women, and STI prevention for men. Uh, we are also going to continue to use the partnership that we have, uh, the partnerships we've established with the behavioral and social science community, primarily through the auspices of the National Institutes of Mental Health, to help us understand and implement uh, more effective engagement um, and adherence procedures. Really, the, the use of behavioral and social science begins before uh, product implementation, where we, are, we need to seek to understand what uh, adolescents and young adults need or could figure out how to use in their lives um, for HIV prevention. Uh, additionally, as products come online and we have completed um, the efficacy portion of trials, how can we develop and maintain partnerships to foster the implementation science to evaluate programs of combination prevention and, and treatment? Uh, this has been a very successful area for um, the NIH through collaborations with PEPFAR. Next slide. In the vaccine area, first and foremost, we need to continue to develop and evaluate HIV vaccines to prevent HIV acquisition. Um, and once um, signals are obtained uh, for safety and or efficacy, we need to be able to um, move to initiate studies um, in adolescents and younger children simply so that we can start getting um, a vaccine that has a signal uh, teed up uh, for use um, in young adults. Additionally, the, the iterative cycle of research takes the, um, the, the signal that we receive from an HIV vaccine, 
uses the, the samples that we collect to determine the correlates of risk and protection. And that's essentially what we're doing in the RV144 follow-up um, in the HVTN702 trial. We're evaluating the, the correlates of HIV risk and protection that were defined on RV144 in the 702 trial. Uh, then moving forward, then um, in other disease areas, um, the, the, vaccine pro, the vaccine agenda will include evaluation of other strategies, such as passive and vectored antibodies and through collaboration with other networks, TB vaccines, and pediatric vaccines. Moving to therapeutics. Um, the research agenda here uh, remains quite robust. We're going to continue to work toward a cure focused on uh, virologic control in the absence of therapy. Uh, and again, in this situation, from infancy to adulthood, we're seeking therapeutic strategies for HIV and TB that are simple, safe, and easy to administer across the lifespan, from birth to adulthood, childhood to adolescence, and, and during pregnancy. Additionally, we're seeking safe, long-acting formulations that are fully suppressive and then can be dosed anywhere from quarterly to annually with such a, a set of therapeutic strategies, an intervention that could be dosed, say, once every six months, um, becomes a significant game changer. And if you think about a prevention strategy that also that could be dosed either quarterly um, or, uh, or, or, or less frequently, we could have these combination strategies for treatment and prevention that were parallel. Clearly, TB is the single greatest infectious disease killer of HIV-positive people around the world. We need to work on better treatments and prevention strategies for HIV-positive as well as at-risk populations. And we also need to continue to work on strategies for the non-infectious comorbidities. Some of that will be done through partnerships that we will, where we will seek to um, improve the quality of life for HIV positive people. A prime example of a successful experiment in that area is our current project with the Reprieve trial between NIH, NIAID, and the Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute to evaluate a statin uh, in uh, HIV positive uh, people that don't qualify for a statin based on their current Framingham score. Uh, as with um, prevention, uh, and including vaccines, we absolutely need to maintain an integrated behavioral social science agenda with a biomedical agenda to help understand how to implement these new tools to remove barriers to it and to achieve better and sustained uptake and outcomes. Pills do not take themselves. Vaccines do not inject themselves. It is absolutely critical that we understand the motivations of what it takes to get um, the, our target populations that are most at risk into our studies so that we can be assured that the research we do is most um, applicable to uh, the most at risk populations. And also in therapeutics, we will continue to partner on focused approaches for implementation. It's not just enough for us also to talk about the science, although it will be the science that drives the discussion for the most part uh, for the next several months. But there are also steps that we see that we can work with you on in terms of streamlining the administrative activities. And we will be back to you um, in late February and early March with some ideas about some pilots uh, that we would like to perform uh, to see if we can improve these administrative activities. Um, first and foremost, we need to continue to work toward better stewardship of the funds while re by refining the processes and procedures to minim minimize the burden at the site, at the network leadership level, as well as NIAID staff levels. We need to continue to improve the practices and procedures to enhance the efficiency of clinical trials operation and, and create ways of simplifying and streamlining the administrative burden on network leadership operation centers and the clinical trials units. Next slide. So uh, in the coming months, uh, we're going to have follow-up webinars uh, from today and from the webinar we had yesterday. We will develop a series of FAQs based on the questions we received and post uh, the answers that we give online so everybody will have access to them. Additionally, we will post a tape uh, uh, of uh, tape, showing my age, we'll, we'll post um, a version of this on the website for people to come back to. 
We're providing a Dropbox for comments and suggestions, and we will keep new information up to date on the NIAID website at that address. Additionally, um, we posted a blog post by me yesterday on that website defining the beginning of this. So as I said, um, we're, we will come back and have webinars on a fairly frequent basis based on the information and the feedback we're getting from you uh, and the community and everybody we're seeking input into. Uh, we're happy to have bilateral discussions with, um, with groups moving forward, but this is all focused at getting us to the AIDS Vaccine Research Advisory Committee, AIDS Research Advisory Committee meeting, ARAC, in September, where we will have pulled together the comments, developed the initiatives uh, moving forward, um, so we can then um, uh, begin the writing process. Again, this is for renewal of the leadership groups in 2020. And uh, again, the primary focus of this will be uh, for the next several months on the research agenda. Uh, with that, I'm happy to close and start taking questions. So feel free to type them in and we will answer them until we run out of either questions or time. Thank you.